Hi everyone, uh, I want to talk about first my contents are not aimed at cultivating wine expert and even those who do not know anything about wine aim to be able to get the best pairing information right away and no cost to enjoy wine with food. Please be sure to subscribe, like and share with others so that this program can be continued. Now, let's get to the point. I was talking about what's perfect pairing wines with oysters. I will broadcast two episodes of oysters, the stamina food, the casanova, the pronoun of playboys, at eight the most. Giacomo Casanova, he born in 1725, he died in 1798. Was a Venetian nobleman who had worked as a writer, diplomat, a spy, etc. In his autobiography, Historia de Mafia, he wrote that he spent his life sleeping with 122 women. Compared to the Playboy in the digital, digital age these days, it may be inadequate. When he was 16 years old, he had a sex with two women in the first sex at the same time. So from the start, he showed an unusual aspect in women's career. He also has a homosexual experience of having sex with four men throughout his life. The reason why we're talking about the Playboy Casanova while talking about oysters is that oysters, Casanova and sex are closely related. Casanova believed that oysters were the source of energy, so as soon as he got up in the morning, he ate 50 raw oysters almost every day. Not only Casanova, but also Asian Roman emperors sent slaves to the England Channel of good quality oysters to pick up and bring them to Rome. The siege of Rome led a large army to conquer England across the Dover Strait to secure oyster around 50 BC. In addition, Borjak, Frenchman, ate 1,444 oysters in one seat, and army fifths of France ate 300 before a meal, and the rich Rome and Europe ate several hundreds and thousands of oysters in their seas. Wow. So what is the reason why oysters are considered the best aphrodisiac? It is a theory that it originated from Greek and Roman mythology. Aphrodite, whose name changed from Rome to Venus, is the goddess of love and beauty. If you look at Sandro Botticelli painting, The Birth of Venus, you will see Venus naked on a large seashell, covering her pussy with long hair. When Zeus' father's corners castrated his father Uranus' penis and threw it into the sea, there was a sea foam around him, and Aphrodite emerged from the sea foam in an oyster shell. Aphrodite comes from Aphrodite. In fact, oysters are nutritionally rich in protein as well as vitamin A1, B1, B2, B3, C, D, and iron, magnesium, calcium, etc. 
So eating five raw, raw oysters a day allows you to consume all the recommended daily vitamins and minerals. There are briefly two ways to eat oyster, raw oysters and cooked oyster. First, consider the case of eating raw oysters. The main characteristic of raw oysters is that they have a salty and mineral flavors, so wine has a high acidity, a crisp, clean aftertaste, and it is good to have the same mineral taste. Therefore, Muscadet, Pinot Blanc, Chablis, Sauvignon Blanc, and Oak de Chardonnay are generally recommended. If you want an inexpensive wine, Muscadet and Pinot Blanc are great choices. The light body Pinot Blanc, which has a green apple scent, is in excellent harmony with the raw oyster, while the Muscadet boasts the most authentic combination in many ways. The fat and rich Kumamoto oyster from California goes well with a little fruit rose wines. Try Tokai Furano of Friuli Venezia Giulia in northern Italy. I disagree that dry Riesling with grapefruit, peaches, and pear grown in warm climate are sometimes recommended for raw oysters. Because the Riesling does not harmonize well with the minerality and the saltiness of the oyster. Now let's review some things to watch out for when choosing raw oyster and the most recommended Chablis. What are the reasons of Chablis goes well with the raw oyster? First, it is due to the cold continental climate and unique Kimmeretian soil characteristic of the Chablis region, located in the northernmost part of, the, of Burgundy in France. Second, the mineral properties of Chablis as like a gunplint sucking river pebbles aroma which make it harmonious with raw oysters, depend on which vinifying method the producer chooses. In other words, is it fermented oak bed and aged in oak barrels or not? If so, how long you do it depend on the duration. It's because when fermenting and aging in oak make the taste complex, rich, and round. On the contrary, purest flavor, sharp acidity, and the slippery mineral properties disappear. The problem is that many Chablis producers today aim for a Mognache-like style that is, in, is aged in oak barrels. Therefore, raw oyster and all Chablis are not compatible with, with each other. So you must know what vinifying method the producer chooses. Let me tell you three types of producer. First, producer who adheres to the taste of a traditional Chablis by fermenting and aging only stainless steel. Louis Michel, Zhang Drup, Zhang Mare, Brokat, A. Renat, Long Dbaki. Second, producers who choose oak or stainless according to the vintage. William Febre, Gilles Collet, Zhang Paul Druin, Domaine La Roche. Third, producers who always do oak aging. Lune and Bengzang de Bissa, Francois and others. In conclusion, when choosing Chablis wine, you should consider both the name of Glima name that determines the terroir and the name of the producer who determines the vinifying method. 
as such complex and specialized knowledge is required. The help of wine expert is essential. What's today's question? Today I will finish with this and in the next episode I will recommend the second way of eating oysters, the case of cooking and eating instead of raw and specific wines for both cases. That's it. Thank you. Bye bye.